All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna be talking about something tough, and that is dying drives. We're gonna be talking about how to tell when your hard drive is dying and when you need to replace it, and some issues associated with that. This is gonna be kind of focused around Synology NAS, though reasonably, this is pretty easy to tell with anything, just because it's gonna be based off of smart data, as well as just kind of finding things out and kind of seeing. So first off, let's talk about how hard drives die. Hard drives die in a very different way than SSDs die. Hard drives are mechanical components, and so as time goes on, the likelihood of them dying just gets slowly, slowly, slower, larger and larger and larger, just until one day they just die. You can have a hard drive that lasts for two years, and I've seen drives that are totally fine running for seven or eight years and have not spit out a single issue. There's no real rhyme or reason. It just kind of happens. It's tr truly random. And so because of that, it's very hard to predict when a drive is dying, though you can generally tell with some indicators. SSDs, on the other hand, have a pretty calculated lifespan because the way that SSDs die, almost always, is they just run out of write. SSDs can only be written to so many times, though in this day and age, that number is very large, so it's a lot less likely to occur. But eventually, SSDs can just kind of die, but it's very predictable. In general, if you have five SSDs in a RAID, they're all gonna die about the exact same time because they're all being written to and read from in the exact same way. Synology actually has a custom RAID that they wrote just to get around this called RAID F1, which essentially sends more writes to some drives than others. I'm not actually how, sure how they actually balance it with the goal of killing some drives earlier than others. So not everything just dies at once. It's really not something you should be too concerned about, but I just wanted to put it out there. This video is really gonna be talking about hard drives though. So hard drives have a great piece on them that is called smart data that helps you learn what is going on, but it is not perfect. So smart data is the hard drive telling your NAS or computer or whatever, hey, I have an issue. I have this many issues. These are my stats. And we kind of want to talk about the key things to look at whenever you're looking at telling if a drive is about to die. And I'm going to dive into a great post by Backblaze here because they have more data than anybody. So Right here, this is just my post on the forum sites that pull up the two really useful pieces. And by far the one we're gonna actually look at is what hard drive errors actually tell us for smart tests. So Backblaze has a bunch of drives. I mean a bunch. I think they've got about 200,000 hard drives actively in use. If you don't know, Backblaze is a backup company and they also sell storage. So basically they are a storage company. So they have a lot of drives and they are a really cool company because they actually publish their metrics about drive failure rates and things like that. So right here, this is the actual smart data they use to tell when a drive is dying. These are the key ones that they actually look at and what they have found to be the best indicator of a dying drive. It is really interesting here, and I will leave a link to this article because it's great, but they talk about all the different smart tests and how likely they are to show up in a failed drive. And so here we can see the percent of their drives that have a at least one value in these smart tests that are still operational and the ones that have failed. And so you can see they have high, high, high correlation with failed drives. So if you look at all Backblaze's drives that have one or more of the tests that have a stat greater than zero, only 4% of them that are operational have them. But for failed drives, 76% of them have it. And so it's clearly a great indicator of a dying drive. Note, not all drives support all the smart tests, so you might not have all of them. Another really interesting one is the actual combination between multiple. So here, if you actually have multiple of those five smart tests that are failing, then you're almost certainly dying and it gets higher and higher correlation. It is very interesting and they're big statistics guys. So I'll leave a link to this article, but what we're really going to learn from this is, hey, these are the five smart tests that you should look at. So this is kind of the anecdotal information for when a drive is going. So I have a drive that I believe is dying. And so I'm gonna talk about my process for doing it. So recently I was running a scrub of my first NAS and I got some errors. I wanna talk about my process for figuring out what these errors are and what the issue is. So I'm gonna go ahead and show them right here. If we go into storage manager, logs, and this right here 
is my IO errors. You can see I've got tons of them in a very short time span while the scrub was running. So right there, there's clearly an issue. Now, it is not a guaranteed issue. That's because this could just be a single section of the drive that had some junk data written to it and the scrub was reading it for the first time and was really figuring it out. But generally, this is a big indicator of a dying drive. All right, so now after I've seen these logs, what's the next thing that I did? Well, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the scrub actually finished. So that's storage pool one, and we are going to see that it successfully did complete. So that means that it was not all lost. Not everything was messed up. So that is a good sign overall. Probably at least it was able to complete. And that means that the pool is still operational, still working well enough, but that drive may be dying. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually going to look at that specific drive. So that is drive number seven. So I'm gonna go into it, I'm going to select it and run a smart test on it. First off, a quick smart test. So we just go into smart and run a quick smart test right here. Quick smart tests take a very short amount of time, so we can actually do it live right here. An extended smart test takes a much longer time, and believe it or not, I've actually really never had an extended smart test tell me that a quick test has not. I still schedule extended smart tests maybe every three months, but quick smart tests are generally good enough and should be your first thing. Though if you do find a drive like this and everything's still coming up good on the quick smart test, leave it overnight and run the extended smart test just because it can tell you some more information. And so as you can see, we came back healthy. You can also see that right after that, that error came out, I also did an extended smart test and it was also healthy. Okay, so now we're saying, all right, the disk says it's okay. I also ran Iron Health and it said healthy as well. All right, so quick interjection here from Will from the Future. If you've not already seen my video on the WD Red WDA issue, Basically, Western Digital has added WDDA analytics. Regardless of what NAS you have, you may have a tab for Western Digital device analytics. This is on Synology, though it is getting removed, and it is now coming to QNAP. If you do see this test, I would highly recommend disregarding it and removing it. Just essentially disable it and just do not listen to any of the data out of it. I'll leave a link to a video that I go over it. Essentially, what it is doing is it will flag a drive as consider replacing if it has been powered on for more than three years continuously. This is not useful, but you may see that and it may freak you out. If you see that, disregard it, and I would highly recommend disabling WDDA altogether. All right, back to the video. All right, every check was coming up green. The next thing I do is I go into the actual smart attributes, and we are going to look at 5, 187, 188, 197 and 198. And so first off, five. All right, so that looks good. Zero. Now we go on over to 187. And 187 is where you see that we actually do have some questionable issues. So we have 145 uncorrected errors. So that is times that the, the drive was told to read information and it failed to read it properly and had to say, hey, I can't do this. 145 is also a lot. This is not just one or two. Anything over 100 for this is a huge red flag and is more likely than not meaning the drive is dying. If you just see one of them here, it really tends to be just a fluke. Maybe there was a, a small timeout or something internal that just did not read it right. But when you've got this many, it tends to mean that there is some issue going on. And I'm also gonna check 188, nothing. And then 197 and 198, both zero. So because I've only got one of those smart tests that are kind of throwing that warning, I'm not gonna be too concerned about it because it is just one. If you have two, that's when you basically just go in and replace the drive ASAP, but with one, you can kind of write it out, but just know that this drive is probably dying. So the next thing I'm gonna to test to tell if a drive is dying, so say we still don't really see much of anything here and you're worried you've got a dying drive. The next really easy thing to do to test it is actually to dump a bunch of data to it and see how long it is taking. So I'm just gonna go on my computer over here and quickly 
just run a black magic disk speed test. This guy is hooked up via 10 gigs, so we can just get the full thing. And we're going to look at our disk reports. So I'll be back in a second and doing that. So a black magic disk speed test is just kind of a easy way of testing the throughput of it. And so all I'm doing this for is basically just forcing a load on the drives. So you could also just copy and paste large files to and from the NAS to do this. But what we want to do is we want to force all the drives to be hit as hard as possible. The next thing we're going to go ahead and open up is our resource monitor. And we are going to look at our disks. And we're going to go into this di view details right here. And we're going to look for disk number seven, drive number seven in this case, to be off than the other ones. So see how everything's right about the same? That is an indication that everything's probably okay. What would be an indication of a failing drive is that say all of these that are in the same RAID group are hovering around 30% utilization during this hit, except for drive seven. Drive seven, I've seen it where one drive that's failing is at like 95% utilization. That's because it is struggling to read data from it. It's having a bunch of errors internally and it is having a ton of trouble reading data from the disks. And so that is a great way of telling when a dying drive is. It's even to the place where I've had users who have had such bad issues where DSM completely locks up because the drive itself is saying, no, I'm good, I can do this, but it is unable to read the data. So DSM just keeps asking it for the data. And so when you actually pull the drive out, DSM immediately becomes responsive. So if you ever notice DSM completely locking up like that, you may have a dying drive. And if you know which one, pulling it out can actually instantly restore it to usability. Though only do this if you've got a redundant RAID and you know the drive is dying and you've got a good backup just because you don't want to pull that out and it immediately desyncs. And now if anything else fails, you lose your pool. You want to be careful with that. But in times where it's completely locked up, I've had to do that before. So here we can see that overall my tests have shown that it's probably dying because it only has a single one of our smart tests that is having the issue only 187. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to buy a new drive, but I'm not going to replace it just yet. Just because, Hey, it may keep working. But right there, that is a great indicator for this drive, maybe on its last legs, just because it did have the errors, though they were all corrected and they did all continue on working. And so I also would run another scrub again and see if the errors came back up. For my case, when I reran the scrub the second time, there were actually no more errors. And so that makes me believe that it was probably fixed. And so in this case, I'm gonna leave it running for a little while but that's just because I have a backup going every single day to another NAS on the same rack. So it's not that big of a deal if I do have to restore from backups, though I definitely am going to be buying another drive. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful for people kind of understanding what I do whenever I'm telling if a drive is dying, it's not like NAS, and kind of forensics you go through and really what information is useful in determining when a drive is going to die or not. If you want to hire me for a project, I've got a link for that down in the description below. And if you have any other questions, go ahead and throw a post on the forums at forums.spacerocks.co. All right, have a good one. Bye.